I stayed here for three days. Morally. The torture room was downstairs, my cell was upstairs, and there were terrible screams all day long. This is the semi-basement. Here, day and night, the screaming. You just lie there, you can't sleep. Both men and women were tortured. Everybody was tortured. Broke my fingers. Here. This is a temporary detention facility of the main police department in the Kherson region. On the left are the investigative rooms where the national police conduct investigations. These rooms were equipped by the Russian military for torture, interrogation, abuse, and inhuman treatment of our citizens. Traces of torture, I will show you, are in every room. Most traces were found in this room. If you can see it, there are blood spatters of a person who was beaten here. Предметів катування було виявлено в цій кімнаті. Якщо ви бачите бризи крові людини, яку тут били, знущалися. They connect two electrodes to the balls and turn on the current. 300 volts. My hair stands on end. Then they turn it down a bit. Everything shakes, your whole body shakes. Then he turned it up again, remember. And then he turned it down again. Again, he added, then turned it down again, again. And with batons. I was drenched. A broken field phone was found here, which was used to make an electrical switch and torture people with electric current. They were tied with duct tape to chairs. Remnants of tape were found in these rooms. And he started hitting me with a baton on my lower back. And then they put some kind of padded stuff on my neck. And a blow to the neck. I had a bump, but it's already gone. It was here, on the left side, and the left side. They had some kind of whip. They whipped me here and here. They beat my buttocks with truncheons. Where is your son? Remember. They demanded I remember because they would come again tomorrow. Все. Ну, боль, конечно, где, где, вспоминай, где сын, где это, я говорю, я не знаю. И мне говорят, все, вспоминай, мы завтра опять приедем. Even when the city of Kherson and almost the entire region were occupied, except for several settlements, we have already registered 43 criminal proceedings and recognized 43 citizens as victims of torture on the territory of the temporary detention facility. After the investigative groups have already been able to perform investigations in Kherson, we receive daily reports from citizens that they or their close relatives were tortured on the premises. We have found lists and inscriptions of people who were held in the cells to identify them, and the work to identify the victims continues. I was detained on April 1, 2022. I was immediately taken to the temporary detention facility in Kherson, tortured there for eight days, then taken to the Simferopol Detention Center 1 in Crimea. They tortured me with group beating with hands and feet, put a noose around my neck and hung me, imitated execution, threatened to torture my parents. They put a noose around my neck and a burly guy tossed me over himself and I hung for a minute. And torture with electricity, their favorite. To the fingers, to the ears, to the kidneys, to the ears, to the genitals, and they passed electric current. На вухо і гениталії і пропускали струм електричний.
Every day they bring them in bags, bring them in, in their underwear, t-shirts, and everyone was crammed in there. There was a woman there, she was arrested, she was there, she was screaming, my wife even felt sick. Well, every day, every night, there are screams, screams, screams. They bring them here, in sacks, and they start screaming. Then they took out two people, two corpses, they were wrapped in plastic. And they threw them into the garage, into the garbage in the outer garage. Well, you could see two people carrying them and throwing them away. That was before they left. Do you know any cases when torture resulted in death during your captivity here? I know that several people committed suicide, a few died during torture, but their names were not mentioned. In the temporary detention facility, I heard screams, please, it was a very horrible picture. Here were the cells used for detention and where citizens were also beaten, including during inspections, as explained by the survivors. In the cells we enter, we see that where they held Ukrainians, Everything is covered in violent Russian propaganda slogans. If they open the cell and let someone in or bring food, you have to shout, glory to Russia, glory to Putin, glory to Shaigu. Everyone stood close to each other. No one looked at them, God forbid you should look at him. And you have to shout, if you don't shout, you get it right away. Was it like that when you were in captivity? Yes. You must know the Russian anthem. Learn it. It's still hanging on a rag in the cell. We were there the day before yesterday. You must know the anthem. If you don't, they'll beat you. Right in the cell, with batons. This is Svobody Square in Kherson. The footage from late February, early March spread all over the world. Kherson residents heroically resisted the invaders for weeks. Then they began to raid the homes of activists. What numbers are we talking about? Thousands, thousands of people. These are not some specific persons, these are thousands of people. All pre-trial detention centers in the region were overcrowded. Guys were brought to us who had been detained for two months already, some in Kahavka, others in Henichesk, 15 people in cells designed for three to four. They told us that everything was overcrowded. They were detained for a Ukrainian flag, a Ukrainian word, for the fact that a brother or son serves in the armed forces and they didn't care if you are 16 or 76, they will still detain and torture you. I believe that they paid a visit to almost everyone who didn't have time to leave, who had any importance in this city. Ukrainian citizens were detained and deprived of their freedom on several criteria. The first made-up reason is cooperation with the Ukrainian army, but in fact, it is for disloyalty to the invaders, support of the legitimate Ukrainian authorities. The second is citizens who previously served in the armed forces. The third is law enforcement officers, including former ones, who were coerced to cooperate with the occupation authorities. In addition, relatives of serving soldiers who were made to report information that interested the occupation forces about our armed forces of Ukraine. They found my son's notebook with some notes. 
I didn't know what it was to. What are these notes? They are military records. I said, I didn't know. But my son is a military man, with over 10 years of contract service. It was around the 27th, 28th of August. It was Saturday, as I remember now. My son is a former auto soldier. He's on contract service. There was a military unit stationed in in Kherson. When they arrived, it was evacuated to Ukrainian-controlled territory. Where, I don't know. At first, I could contact him via phone. He wrote, I'm fine, and that's all. I didn't know where he is, what he was doing, because they could intercept everything. He has a house, a private one, naturally, he left, animals, vegetable gardens, you have to tend to the household. I went there every day. I fed the animals, cleaned up, all that. Then came the moment when there was a knock at the gate. I was there. I figured it was them. They had cordoned off this alley, leads from my house to the dormitory, Bylazersky Avenue. They cordoned it off. There were 15 to 20 people, they blocked off that driveway and the one from Kalika Street. They had guns, they opened fire. People started to come out, to see what happened. There was a rifleman at each house, don't go out. I open the door, they break in. He was in front with a big shield, with rifles, wearing masks. Where are the weapons? I said, what weapons? Open the drawers. I started opening them, they shoved me aside and started doing that on their own. The shed, the attic, a full search, they threw everything on the floor. They started looking through my cell phone. Well, well, well. Untrue information. You're going with us for an interview. They handcuffed me, put a bag on my head, through the gate, put me in a van, and took me away. Of course, I could see where. When we arrived here, I figured by the pavement that I was brought to the detention center here. I was hit a couple of times at home, then they hit me on the head here. I sat there for 30 minutes. Then it was, hands behind your back, and, head at waist level, just as they do with death row inmates. Not just stand against the wall, but, lower your head, otherwise they will hit you. Head lower. What are you looking at? I can't see while he's leading me upstairs. They threw me into a cell, with seven other people. I was beaten from the waist down, and I still have hardening of the calf muscle. I used to wear slippers because I had a foot like an elephant's. Пояса до ног, и до сих пор у меня затвердение икроножной мышцы. Я ходил в тапочках, потому что у меня нога вот такая была слонячая. They found me at home, said that they wanted to ask me two questions and it would take an hour at most. They handcuffed me, beat me at home, and took me to the regional state administration building. My neighbors saw it, I am pro-Ukrainian, used to be an activist, was a public official. They offered me to work in their military administration. They coerced, offered, and promised freedom from the first days. Then they took me to Crimea, to the Simferopol detention center. Interrogations, constant interrogations, threats and offers to work for them in the authorities. There were activists, journalists in Simferopol. They were also offered to cooperate, promised freedom and money. There were 51 people, that's how many we counted, all from the Kherson region. Beatings, electric current, with stun guns, they had special, big ones, like a baton. Sometimes they beat us with batons, sometimes with feet, 
and sometimes every other day, sometimes daily, with electricity, just to be sure. But you were there for 5.5 months, they tortured you all these months? No, somewhere at the end of the summer, they abruptly stopped the torture. They abruptly stopped the torture. For everyone? For everyone, suddenly, one day, they suddenly stopped it. Maybe something about the international community and publicity, there was no other explanation. They periodically released those who had already been through all the circles of hell. One, two, four people at a time. They taped a hat on their heads, said they were taking them to the DNR for execution, that they brought them to Kherson and released them. My physical condition was perfect, and after the release I am still undergoing treatment. I had a stroke, a broken rib, a broken sternum. Was it broken at the beginning? Yes, in Kherson. Since the beginning of March, Irina Deravyanko and I organized a volunteer center at school number 23 and it is still working. There, we distributed food, gave haircuts, treated, distributed medicines, guys from Odessa sent us medicines. It was vital in March. Somewhere in mid-March they started rounding up the most active ones. I was among them. I immediately wrote a post about it on Facebook, and in several hours, I saw two cars parked at my neighbor's house. He was also pro-Ukrainian, I realized that I was next, and for two weeks, I was hiding at my friend's place. I saw they didn't come for me, so I returned home. And on July 6, they knocked on my gate. We haven't woken up yet, they are banging on the gate, my mother says, the Russians are here. I go out to the yard, look. Glory to the heroes. I see the top of his head sticks out over the fence, glasses, a helmet. I said, good morning. He says, good for some, not that good for others. Then, though the search began. Of course, I hid everything that was pro-Ukrainian at home, but I forgot that I had a certificate of appreciation. I am the director of a charitable foundation, support for Kherson Special Operation Battalion, and I had letter of appreciation from the right sector. They found it, along with a flag of the right sector. I still have my old phone case as a memento, who ordered the murder of Katya Hanswick. One FSB officer shows it to another, the latter nodded. Then they found the appreciation certificate and told me to get dressed. They brought me to the detention facility, took my shoelaces, belt, and cross, brought me to the guys in the cell, and I was there until the first interrogation. They brought me to the second floor, and they call it the Northern Lights. They put small contacts on your limbs and torture you with electricity. I was tortured with electricity. The first week you are questioned, tortured, and you give some testimony, and then you sit and they leave you alone. There is psychological pressure, you hear other guys being tortured, and you don't know when you will get out of there. I was there for 54 days. I know about five people who stayed there forever. It was too much for their health. One was my friend, he had diabetes, a coronary disease, and a trident tattoo. Also, one person died in my cell after torture. Mikhailo Karani. How many people were held there in total? 134 people I know of at the time I was there. Before I was released, 
They began to feed me more or less adequately and brought boiled eggs. The Russians forced the guys who were carrying the food to count the eggs. And they shouted across the corridor how many eggs there were, the most was 134 eggs. I have two friends whose phones don't respond. The Russians followed a list. You couldn't go outside because you were afraid that you could be stopped. Your phone checked. If you had anything with Ukrainian symbols, God forbid, or some songs, you would be immediately checked and filtered. That's why people were afraid to carry their phones outside. They could come to your house. Of course, it's hard without my mother, because the only time I was separated from her for a long time was for two to three weeks when I was five years old, when my dad and I visited my granny in Moscow. And two months was just, I don't know. He cried when I came back. At least his dad was at home. We went to the dacha to do some repairs. My son called and said, Mom, they are breaking down our door. On July 23rd, at about 6.30 p.m., I said, open the door, let them in, realizing that at home, we had a little flag, some ribbons, but nothing they could accuse us of. We hurried home got there in 20 minutes. Of course, on the way, we deleted all the groups that could interest them. The only thing I left was my chat with my sister, who had already left for Krivi RIH with her children. And they just started trying to find at least something in my phone. I managed to log out of my military Instagram. We are all trolls in a way. We mocked Russia, that's for sure. The dogs near my home always wanted orc kebabs. They didn't find it. The only thing that they clung to was the chatware. For example, I wrote that we were in a shop and the orcs entered it. We got scared, though they were going to seize it, but they were just buying paint. We laughed at this. But they got irritated. I got a slap on the back of my head. He asked me if my sister was sending the intel. I said, my sister is a housewife, what intel? Another wallop. They picked on my child. They rummaged through his backpack. He has a knife in his backpack, a teenage thing. He asks me why, and I say, weren't you teenagers? Bam. Another wallop. One of them came running, we're going to put a knife under your fingernails and see to whom you're sending data. He started threatening me with a knife, I didn't pull my hand away. I must have felt so much concentrated hatred. They took me away. He told me to bring warm clothes. I asked how warm. It's summer, it's hot. We are in shorts, the AC is running, we're sweating anyway. Way. And he says, the warmest. I got scared and took my winter pants and a warm sweater. From what they said on the phone, they wanted to take the whole family to the basement. Some man on the phone suggested putting the entire family in the basement. They only took me, and thank God, because the next day when I heard the men shouting, I realized that it would be better if I stayed in jail. Because at that time, I thought that they didn't torture women. But it wasn't like that at all. During the two months I was there, 20 people passed through our cell. When I got to the detention facility, there were 60 people. When I left, there were 130. I was released on September 20th. She was a school teacher. They held her for five days, forced her to make a move saying, bring your children to school. When she was released, when we met later, she said that she was beaten and held in those solitary cells, frightened her that they were not taking her home. 
but to be shot. They pressured her mentally. She still doesn't feel mentally well after that. They were trying to find out information. Alia, a policewoman, was with me. They were brought in for service weapons. They tried to blame Alia for the explosion on Senia Vina Street. She and her boyfriend got there. Another Alia was accused of leaking coordinates. Her nephew is in the ATO, a hero, but she was accused, not of being in the ATO, but of leaking him coordinates. Before they took my mother, people in balaclavas with Russian flags wanted me to write something on a piece of paper. They couldn't find a piece of paper, so they forced me to record it on their phone, and I was forced to say that we were being shelled by Ukraine and so on. But it hit the orcs where it was supposed to. It landed where it should, but they forced us to say that civilians were being shelled. <laughs> By the way, their son-in-law disappeared back in late March. And hasn't returned. There are neighbors. My son-in-law worked as a crime analyst in the main department. On the first day, they weren't evacuated, they remained here, patrolling until. I want to say, fascists, until they entered the city. Then, when they entered the city and started seizing administrative buildings, they wanted to leave for the Ukrainian-controlled territory, but they didn't have time. March 27, Sunday. They were going to visit their grandmother. She lives a little further away. The daughter began to collect a present for her grandmother, and he left five to seven minutes earlier, when she came out, he was gone. And since then, we haven't heard from him. They took Yaroslav. Is it your son? My son. Stepson. On July 3rd, they took him from the street for a chat, for his phone, and kept him for 3.5 months, and took them all to the other side of the Dnipro. Some part, 20 people, were released from our detention center, and the rest were taken to the other side. Toward Crimea, one person called me on Viber, I saw our Ukrainian number. He said that he was allegedly in Kalanchik in the police station. His mother packed her things and went there, brought him warm clothes, boots, but the police said they wouldn't let him go. С вещами туда поехала, все ж ему теплые вещи взяла, это ж там ботинки. И то есть в РВД там сказали, что мы его не отпустим. She can't get home. No, now there is no phone signal, nothing. Did they take people with them? A police van arrived, they put someone in the van and left. This is the building of Ukragroprekt. Many of my friends and my wife worked here, and in 2014 there was an office of the right sector. During the occupation, it was seized by the FSB, where they held and tortured people. It was the most terrible place in Kherson to be held in captivity. Did you have friends there? Yes, I did. The worst thing that happened there was that they kept people handcuffed to radiators. And they didn't let some guys go to the toilet for up to five days. And, of course, beating, all that goes without questions. People were also kept here. My friend was detained here. He was held for more than 150 days, and now he was taken away and we don't know where he is. Do you know how many people they kept here? Not too many, because they have fewer cells here. The most people were at our place and in the detention center.
Николай Николаевич, визуальный закон о речи быстрого пешкодии. We are currently at the Kherson Detention Center, where representatives of the Russian occupation troops, Russian servicemen, actually detain civilians, and it is possible that in addition to detention there was torture, but so far we haven't found any signs of this. So far, the investigation has not found any traces of torture in this detention center, but it will be more difficult to do here because before the invaders left, they burned some of the rooms. In addition to illegal detention and torture of Kherson residents, the invaders also committed other crimes of war, such as looting critical infrastructure facilities, hospitals, pharmacies, fire stations. They also blew up electricity and water supply before retreating. What we see here on the square, people standing in line for warm clothes, medicines, food, is a direct result of Russian crimes. But even in the midst of this horror there is a glimmer of hope, because I was very afraid that when our troops came to Kherson, we would not see a single person wearing the Ukrainian flag, because the invaders either tortured them all or took them away. However, when we arrived, we saw that there seemed to be even more people who love Ukraine in Kherson. Amidst all that hell, we have found love for each other, which wasn't likely under any other circumstances. You survived it. You preserved it here. Thank you.